Usually what I like to do with students before they do their research, uh, if you like, is have them play around a little bit with twin motion. That way they kind of get excited about the tool and can understand how it works or have sort of a hands-on kind of appreciation of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that right now. And at the same time, we're uh, going to show the students how to uh, basically uh, navigate the 3D space. Often beginners, this is where they have the most difficulty is navigating in the 3D space for the first time. So you will see here there's three lines and underneath this there's a uh, materials room. So I'm going to click on that and open it. Now this room comes with pretty much all kinds of the bells and whistles that you can find or add in your twin motion projects. So this uh, has two purposes to learn, teach them to navigate and and uh, manipulate and do stuff uh, and whatever they do in here it doesn't matter if they break it the, you know the whole point is just to learn okay so you can see some of the models that you can bring in so you can bring in here's a model that's not animated here's a model that's animated here's two models that probably come together here's like you could add a drone to your scene uh, lighting you can add extra lighting um, all this is basically a twin motion scene that was built to allow you to learn how to work. And so what I'm doing right now, as you see, I'm panning. So I'm clicking on the right mouse button. So I leave the default settings for twin motion. If for some reason your students are used to using some other software, like mine use Unreal Engine a lot. So sometimes students choose to use the Unreal Engine uh, settings, which are just a little bit different, not quite the same. Uh, but they're quite similar actually. Uh, so what I want to do now is have the students start with this. And I'm going to say, okay, well, how do you move forward? Well, I double, I use the W, A, S, D keys. Okay. So if anybody's ever played video games, they know because this is how they play video games on a PC. Now, if they play a PlayStation or something, it's not the same, but if you play video games on a PC, you're always using the W, A, S, D keys. Now, I really like the WASD keys because you can also use the Q and E keys. So you see, I can go below and above. Now, one of the really, really useful hotkeys that I always teach the students right off the bat is called the F key. So what is the F key? So I'm going to select this and press F. And it basically means frame. So it frames whatever it is. And then I can move back out. And let's pretend I wanted to frame this car. I just press F. So it moves me really quickly. And I'm also using a scroll mouse. So if you don't have a scroll mouse, I would strongly encourage you to get a scroll mouse uh, because look at how much quicker you can move back and forth here. And uh, now I'm going to use W, A, S, D, and I'm now going to use the E to go down and see the materials on the floor. Then I can go all the way out and back in. So, you know, just having students do that as a first step is really important. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to manipulate some objects. So I'm going to go, um, I think this block over here, and I'm going to press F. So there's a block, and I'm going to just go over here. And you see here there's these uh, manipulators. So I press the 5, 6, or 7 key. So uh, this here allows me to transform. You see how it's a cube? So if I, I click the top one, it'll stretch it out. Okay, I'll go Control Z, which is your friend. Control Z means it goes back to whatever you did before. If I use the middle one, it'll proportionally increase it. If I use this one, it'll increase it this way. If I use this one, it'll increase it uh, in this direction. Okay, and again, I, I might want to click Z a couple times to bring it back. So that is how I do that. So that is the seven key. That's the uh, the the uh, modify the size of the block. This works with. Uh, a lot of and now I'm using the six key which allows me to move this okay so if I click on any arrow it allows me to move it in the 3d space so should students should explore that and uh, number five is kind of you notice how it's just moving on a plane if I click on the middle and uh, you know one of the things using the right mouse key uh, they can learn to uh, to do that or WASD Okay, so I just use WASD mostly, and then uh, five, six, seven. Okay, those are the hotkeys. 
Um, one, two, three are also good keys to know. That's your speed. All right, so if I go like this, right now I'm really slow. Now I press number two, you see how much quicker I'm moving? That's the run speed. And number three is really fast, okay? Now, if you don't remember the hotkeys, you can also get a lot of that up here. So you see your speed icon here. So you got your plane speed, your drive speed, your bicycle speed, and your walk speed. And it even has the number one, two, three, four. Um, so you can, you know, I, I, I usually like two. It's good enough. You can move around quickly. And uh, in this panel, there are other really interesting things too. You can change the time of day. So, you know, it's dark. It's five o'clock at night. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it where it was before, just so you can see that it's there. Uh, you can take screenshots. Uh, so just F9. That's the hotkey. There you go. Uh, here's, if you have your VR headset, you can just click it and boom, you're in VR. So, uh, now, right now mine's not connected, but just by, as, as long as it's connected, it's that easy. Okay. Um, so my advice for you is to encourage kids to keep playing around in here. Uh, one thing too that I could show you is these materials. So you have the color picker tool and it'll allow you to pick, uh, different materials in here. And, uh, you can actually grab this and place it, you know, so students could play around, uh, with different things. And now this is obviously a roof tile, doesn't really fit there. Now they could and also go over here and under materials. Just drag one in, all right? And they could decorate this and play around a little bit. And you'll see there's some really cool ones here. Like, let's add this metal here. So you have a golden floor. You could even go and put water, which makes absolutely no sense. But, it would, you know, the kids basically, let them have some fun here. And, and what I usually do is I kind of use this as a hook. Uh, because when they're playing around and they're having a lot of fun. And I could, they can even start uh, going down here and taking a couple images so you know create an image and what it does is it basically creates an image of this and then let's pretend i wanted an image of this i just click again and so the students are basically learning how to use the tool i'll click another image and let's pretend you wanted them to just practice how to export this so we did just images well you just would click all three of these and or select all which works and then you can just export them and make a, like a little slideshow so that way that could be an intro activity for you and uh, you could have them select different things and play around with different ideas uh, you know you know think certain things like there's the models you can't you shouldn't play around with them too much uh, if they're not animated when you look at them they're just not animated the, see like these models over here are animated all right so that's the start uh, let them have some fun and after this, let's get down to the research.